Hello, Mr. Moss here, and in this video, we're going to be looking at grouping and sharing strategies for uh, dividing numbers. We're going to be working with pretty familiar division facts. We're going to be really learning about how we can organize uh, an amount into different groups. So let's dive in and get started. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is a simple division piece right here. We have 18 divided by 3. Uh, it should be a familiar division problem here. The answer is 6. As a quick review, the starting amount, your total, is always your dividend. How many parts you're dividing it into is your divisor. And then the 18, uh, I'm sorry, the answer, 6, that's the quotient. The thing is, is really there are two main ways to look at it. I can either take 18 and I can divide it into three, meaning I can make three groups here and see that there are going to be six in each group. Or I can say, okay, I've got 18 here. I can divide it so that there's three per group and say that there are going to be a total of six groups. Either way, I have 18 divided by 3 equals 6. And yet, I think we could all agree that what we're seeing right here, 6 groups of 3, is very different from 3 groups of 6. So that's what we're going to be learning about. We're going to be learning specifically about the two different ways to divide something, and that kind of helps us to see which of these results we'd get. Again, we call that the grouping strategies and the sharing strategies. So let's take a look at the difference between them. In both instances, you know the total amount that you're starting off with. That's your dividend, and that amount is known to you. However, in the sharing strategy, the next step is to figure out, okay, how many groups are you going to have? You know the total amount, and you know how many groups you're going to have. So what you need to figure out is how many of your items, whatever it happens to be, are you going to have per group? That's your quotient. How many are per group? That's the unknown. You know the total. You know how many groups you're going to have. You need to forget how many in each group. On the other hand, in the grouping strategy, you know your total amount. That's the dividend. And then next comes the divisor. How many per group. In the sharing strategy, that was your quotient, what you didn't know. Here, we know that. We know the, uh, how many there are going to be per group, but we need to figure out how many groups there are. That's now our quotient. That's our unknown. So let's take a look at what we can do with this, because this is still a little confusing. Sharing, what you're trying to figure out is how many per group, whereas in grouping, you're going to figure out how many groups there are. So let's take a look together. So let's say we've got this problem right here. Ignacio. Ignacio visited the Pez factory, and he bought 18 refill packs of candy. You can see them pictured right here. They're when you run out of uh, candy in your Pez dispenser. Uh, right now, we have no way of knowing if we're going to use the sharing strategy or the grouping strategy for this particular problem. Because in both instances, the total amount, in this case the 18 uh, refill packs that we have are known to us. So let's keep reading and find out. Okay, here's our new version. Ignacio visited the Pez factory and bought 18 refill packs of candy. He wanted to have three refills of candy for each Pez dispenser. How many dispensers does he have refills for? We're going to go through this problem, but if you're feeling confident right now, why don't you pause this video and see if you can figure out whether this is sharing or grouping. All right, so we know the dividend, the total, 18 refill packs. We know that he wanted to have three refills of candy for each Pez dispenser. When I think for each dispenser, I think of the word per. How many per group? So that's making me think that it's the grouping strategy, but let's keep going here. How many dispensers does he have refills for? Well, each dispenser is a group, holds a group of those refill packs. That sounds like how many groups? It looks like it's the grouping strategy. And a way that I could visualize this right now is, let me just bring up the right icons here. Bear with me. All right, I'll fix this in a minute here. He wanted to have uh, three refills of candy for each Pez dispenser. So it tells me we can have a dispenser right here. And of course, now I'm messing this up here. 
So we wanted to have three refills of candy for each Pez dispenser. So we've got one refill right here. We can equip another Pez dispenser here. Another Pez dispenser here. Another Pez dispenser here. Yet another Pez dispenser, one number five. And finally, number six. So it tells us that there are 18 refills divided by three refills per dispenser equals one, two, three, four, five, six Pez dispensers I can have refills for. 18 divided by three equals six, but because I'm figuring out how many groups I can make, I'm using the grouping strategy. Now, on the other hand, let's go down and take a look at another option here. This time, Ignacio visited the Pez factory and bought 18 refill packs of candy, same as before. He shared them between his three favorite Pez dispensers. So it's still 18 divided by three. But this time, I know how many groups. That's known to me. What I need to figure out is how many packs each one gets, how many per group. That tells me that I'm going to use the sharing strategy. And I could, if you look here at the rows here, we've got, we've got here one, this could be filled in again. Sorry about that. One, two, three. So that's showing me that in this example here, I can share my Pez candy evenly amongst my three favorite uh, Pez dispensers. It's still 18 divided by three equals six, six candies per uh, dispenser. How many per group? It's the sharing strategy. Let's take a look at a different uh, example right here. We have Clementine. Clementine had 20 baseballs. She divided them equally in five different containers. How many baseballs were stored in each container? So again, I know my total amount, and I know how many groups I'm having. Five different containers. So I can even rearrange them here. One, two, three, four, Five. This is one container. I'm just going to move this guy here to make another container. Here's one here. And why am I messing up here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Did I not put in enough? Wouldn't that be hysterical? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Whoops! I didn't put in enough. All right. Oh my goodness, I'm messing this all up here. Five different containers. You know what, this is what in our class we like to call a moss mistake. We were doing so well and then it all came apart, but we can fix it here. And I can see I've got an extra one hiding back here. All right, let's try this all again now. Clementine had 20 baseballs. She divided them equally in five different containers. Here we go. Here's one container here, two containers, three containers, four containers, five containers. So we've got five containers, four baseballs in each container. But if I change the wording of this particular problem, we can solve it a different way. Clementine had 20 baseballs. She put five in each container. First, let's fix my improper can of baseballs here. Let's just move them up here for a moment. Okay, now here's our 20 baseballs again. Let's try this again. Clementine had 20 baseballs. She put five in each container. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five. And this is what I was trying to do before here. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. All right. So we know that there are going to be a total of eight, uh, 20 baseballs, 
five in each container, five per group here. And that tells us what we need to figure out is how many groups, how many containers did she fill with her baseball? We're using the grouping strategy, whereas in the last one, we knew how many groups there were. We needed to figure out how many per group. That was the sharing strategy. In both cases, our answer is four. It's just that here we're talking about four per group. And here we're talking about a total of four groups. Sorry about the confusion right there with uh, the number of baseballs. I should have double checked that. This has been Mr. Moss working with you today on grouping and sharing division strategies. I hope this was a helpful guide for you. Have a great day.